again, super excited to talk to a guy. I haven't talked to him forever. I know. He used to spend some time in Sacramento. Of course, he works for The Athletic. He's the one and only Zach Harper. How you doing, man? Oh, I could not be happier to be here right now. Look Dude. at you guys. Look at the look at the glow up and the come up on you two. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. oh God. I, yeah, yeah. I appreciate come it, man. Come on. Dude, how are you? Oh, top of the world. I had acupuncture this morning. I feel great. Ooh. Okay, what's yeah. that? That scares me so much. I, well, it, th so I've had I've had acupuncture a lot. Um, I've got like a sciatic nerve issue, which I know everyone was tuning in to find out. Um, yeah. but this was the first time they did like, like, uh, not electroshock therapy because that sounds dramatic, but they would add a little electricity to the acupuncture, oh. and it actually really helped. I mean, really, you, really helped. Add more to that. They stick needles all in you. You're gonna add more. Well, it no, but it's like it just. It, I don't get how it works, but it just always sounds like it works for people. So this is something I want to try. But did, did the needles hurt? <laughs> well, it so like <laughs> such a weird conversation to have on. No, this is actually show. why we had you on. Oh, okay, great. Um, yeah, yeah. So the sciatic nerve has caused recently um, my glute and my hamstring to be super tight. <laughs> and so when they put the needle in my hamstring, it hurt because my hamstring is like as tight as it can be, but it only hurts for like a second. It like, there's a little <laughs> spasm and then it's fine. And then you don't even notice it. I kind of fell asleep a little bit. It was great. Wow. I want it. They do Go cupping do and like bloodletting. It's great. <gasps> yeah. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you are you competing? Yeah, are, I'm sorry. Are, are you, you playing in the are, NBA? Are you, yeah, or? Do you have a game tonight? No, it's just uh, not to brag, but you know, you hit oh. your 40s, your body really breaks down. Like it's just okay. something you go through. Yeah, uh, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's been a long time since the Kings have been relevant. They're coming off a <laughs> tough loss last night to Minnesota. I know you you keep up with Minnesota as well. You keep up with the league. I was really impressed with Minnesota last mm. night. Second, I have a back to back, two mm -hmm. big time wins. I think there's a lot of Kings fans out there concerned about a potential matchup with the T Wolves in the playoffs. So, what 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 do you make of last night? I mean, I, from the Timberwolves standpoint, I thought it was maybe their best team effort all season long, just from top to bottom. Like they they were incredible, and especially like you mentioned, back to back. Carl didn't play last night, um, and they just execute. And to out execute the Kings down the stretch is just not something I expected. Once it was tight, I was like, oh, the Kings are going to pull this out because Kings have been so good in the clutch and. The T Wolves just they outlasted them, right? They they just were fantastic. And I think from a Minnesota standpoint, it's different than last year. Like last year, they played really the dumbest playoff series I've ever seen between two teams with them in Memphis. <laughs> like I, I couldn't believe from game to game. I was like, whoever makes the fewer mistakes is gonna win this. And that's not like that sounds like basic analysis, but for that series, it was like, my God, it's just there's so many mistakes happening left and right and so many dumb decisions. But now, you know, they have Gobert. They have Conley. Those are two more adults than they had last season. Not you can't exploit them, but there there is a there is a more sound approach to what that series would look like. Also, you don't know how the Kings are going to respond, but I mean that offense. Like I just I don't for a team like Minnesota who who can struggle with offense. I don't know how you stop that or you match that offense in a in a seven game series. Mm. Oh wow. Well, I mean, it seemed like they stepped up to the game plan last night, but I you know, you talk about Minnesota and that team effort, all around team effort last night. So, what about when Cats back in there? Does that make you feel better or worse about uh, this team? Yes, both. I mean, <laughs> like it's just it's weird because they didn't get a lot of time in the first month of the season to figure it out before he got hurt. And then he missed four months, right? Like he missed four months and they've had guys in and out. They've had changes with the D'Angelo Russell to Mike Conley deal. Um, guys have stepped up. Guys have fallen out of rotation. Um, from an offensive standpoint, I think it can make sense because Cat is such a great shooter. Like it, it really bothers me when people are like, oh, he's a great shooting big man. No, he's just a great shooter. Like he's like 40% from three for his career. Like he takes a ton of them too. Like he's just a great all around shooter. So you can make it work by having him on the perimeter. But at least that first month of the season, the lane was clogged. Anthony Edwards had nowhere to go on offense. Like it, they have to figure out the spacing. And then defensively, he is someone you can pick on, on defense. They don't have a lot of those guys anymore, but he's definitely one. And, and so I think there are a lot of pluses to it, but they have to figure out the weaknesses. So when you look at the Kings, obviously, I think people were a little skeptical early on, scoring a lot of points, sure. hanging in there. Now they've done it for a good portion of the season. Um, what's been the biggest surprise to you with this Kings team? Has it just been how explosive the offense has been? 
Yeah, I mean, I look, Mike Brown, not known as an offensive coach, I think he's done a great job adjusting and learning stuff up, along the way, and especially his time in, in Golden State. Like, you just tell that's rubbed off on him, and he's he's just taken so much from that. Um, you know, this Kings team, like you guys know, like they, they haven't been that relevant since 2006. And <laughs> I mean, like, like one of my favorite set, like the last time that they clinched a playoff berth, Talladega Knights was in theaters. Oh, like my that's God. like that's how oh long ago it was, right? So there's just so much to question even in the early parts of the season. And and I think the surprising thing is after the trade last year, they actually weren't good at offense. You would expect a, a Domas and Fox team to be good at offense. I know there were a bunch of factors there, but they were bad on offense. And yeah, then, it's probably because they were having Justin Holiday play 30 minutes hey. a night. That's, hey, I <laughs> like Justin Holiday. I, we're not gonna, but, I like Justin but yeah, 30 minutes too. is way too many. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so like there wasn't, in my mind, there wasn't a lot to build off of in terms of hope there, but you bring in Mike Brown, He's just a great coach. Like he he really is. I think the surprising thing is that the defense is still really bad in my opinion, but the I that's the best offense in NBA history. Did anyone have that going into the season? They'd be the best offense in NBA history. Like and it's not even close. They're blowing everybody away on offense in terms of a historical standpoint. So like I just I I'm shocked it kept up, but at this point how could you not buy in? It okay. I, cause I'm, I mean, I'm with you. And I think sometimes, you know, track record shows like defense wins championships. Do you think that this Kings team with this offense has a chance in the postseason? When I say a chance, I, I guess I mean more like even just coming out of the first round. Yeah, coming out of the first round for sure. Like, I would be worried if they're playing the Warriors, although the Warriors play, I mean, my goodness, some of the mm. worst basketball on the road that I can. Like, I mean, it's just, it's stunning how bad they've been on the road this year. And you could say injuries, you could say all this stuff. Like, even when the main guys are there, they've played bad, bad basketball on the road. So I guess that would open the door a little bit. Normally, I'd be like, yeah, the Warriors are going to wax them. Like, that's a bad matchup. But I could, you know, Kings will have home court. If they protect the first two games, then I can absolutely see it. Against Minnesota, I think... They have the upper hand. The other teams, it's so tough projecting a young team that hasn't been there before, right? Yeah. And and like Sabonis has been in the playoffs, but he hasn't had really any success. You know, Harrison has obviously had incredible success there, but it's it's been a, a little while since he was he was in there, and I don't know how much you expect him to take over in in big moments, just from a leadership standpoint, to don't calm everything about down. Matthew Delvadova in his sure. championship ring. <laughs> yeah, his championship ring. I mean, sure, Steph Curry put him in the hospital one time, but yeah, like it was, <laughs> you know, it's, like he's got he's got some experience there too. Um, so it, it's hard to project a young team and how they will respond. But we've seen you know Memphis look pretty good. Like New Orleans last year, even though they lost in that series, they looked pretty good. Like I, they could. The Kings could absolutely like buckle down against even a healthy Clippers team, a healthy Warriors team, and you feel good about their chances. Now, a deep playoff run, that's where I'm going to push back a little bit because I just, again, the main guys just haven't really been there before. Who do you trust in the West? Do you trust anybody in the West at this point? I trust a healthy Kevin Durant. And that's oh. like I tr- if Ke- if KD's healthy, like I don't think anyone's is that a, sons. Is that a thing? Is a healthy Kevin Durant a thing anymore? Do we know? Hey, well, in 2023, yeah. that's a toughie. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, no, that's I think I'm that's with hard you. to find. Yeah, like I Denver's still Denver's in, and maybe this is a good thing. Like Denver's kind of in that Milwaukee mode for me from a couple of years ago, where it's like, all right, you guys got to do something in the playoffs to prove it, and then they won the championship, so that worked out for them. Denver, I just I don't trust their defense and I don't trust their health. And I unless Jamal Murray is going to play like he did in the bubble, I don't know if you can count on him game after yeah. game. And then everyone else after like Memphis, terrible in the half court, which you need to be good at in, in the playoffs. Uh, the the Wolves, the the Clippers, the Warriors all have major flaws. I'm not buying the Lakers. I'm not buying anyone else in the playing tournament. So like, uh, yeah, a healthy, a healthy KD. I'm, I'm in on him. You you didn't really mention the Clippers. We always say like on paper champions, whatever the hell everyone says about them. Mm-hmm. What 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 do you feel about the Clippers? I again, they you got it. Like I'm done. Like I love mm. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is one of my favorite players. Um, I I trust him. I don't trust that Clippers jersey. I don't trust Paul George. I don't trust Russell Westbrook. I like I. How can you how can you give them the benefit of the doubt? At this point, they don't treat the regular season seriously. It's been better this year, the last couple of months and in, in how they've approached it. But they they seem to think like, oh, well, on paper, we look like a title contender, so we will be one. And it just doesn't work out that way. 
Where where do you stand this MVP race? I feel like everyone has some uh, take on it, but I mean it's <laughs> it's obviously uh, an interesting race. Yeah, I uh, I hate the conversation. I yeah. can tell you that. Like it's Same. just it, why did remember when debating MVP was fun. And now it right. just seems like a chore. It seems like I gotta like wash wash dishes or clean the bathroom or something, <laughs> and like just to just to do this. Like I right now, I and I have a vote. Um, luckily, like I I'm leaning Giannis right now because I think like Chris Middleton's played like 30 games and they have the best record in the league. Yeah. And a lot of that is Giannis. Now Drew Holiday's been great. Brooke Lopez has been great. I don't want to say he doesn't ha- have help, but I'm leaning Giannis just because of what he does on both ends of the floor and how great he's been. But by the end of the sentence, I might be thinking it's Embiid or Jokic. Like I, I go back and forth between those three constantly. Super disappointed Embiid didn't play last night against Denver. Like, come on, like give us that matchup again. Thank no, you. that's what we're saying. Like, that, like that's we get it weak. twice I'm, a year. Yeah, twice a year. And like, I get it. He had a calf injury, and and it's been bothering him for a little bit. Come on, you got to give us that one. They can't be high altitude was going to make that calf like get worse, right? <laughs> I, well, I'm not a I'm not a biologist or a scientist or anything, but I don't feel like that's a thing. No, I, get it, some cupping done, you know? Get some cupping Yeah, go to acupuncture. What are you doing? That's all you need to do. Yeah. And then he had that piece that came out, Shams put out yesterday, where he goes, I've never felt better. I'm like, no, you I, don't play. I'm like, what? Like, like, I'm not going for the MVP. I'm not campaigning for it. It's like, yeah, you got Daryl Morey on your side. He'll campaign for you. That's what he does. <laughs> You know, it's, it, I mean, now that we're just kind of going around the NBA and I just saw on the screen, uh, ESPN was talking about the Nets and shutting down someone like Ben Simmons to what, give me some of your thoughts on Ben Simmons and yeah. if he has a future in this league. Uh, this will sound very basic, but like if he wants to, he will. Okay. I truly believe that. Now, I don't know. I don't know how bad that back is. Maybe he needs some cupping too, right? Like, I don't know how bad <laughs> that back is, but yeah. I think I think he is a player that is underappreciated, undervalued. He is really good. I get all the all the issues with him on the court, doesn't score, doesn't shoot, afraid to of the free throw line. He's one of the best defenders in the league. He's an incredible playmaker. He's a great rebounder. Like he can play, but he is so in his own head right now. And maybe some of that's the body and maybe some of that is just what happened over the last couple of years, but that's a guy who was on pace to make the Hall of Fame. Like, he, like wow. th- I want to say yeah. this was before, before the the Atlanta Hawks series, but he was on pace. That if he didn't get any better and he played like a decade more at this level, he was going to surpass like sixteen thousand points, eight thousand rebounds, eight thousand assists, which I think only LeBron and Jason Kidd have done. Like that's it. Like he was going to be a Hall of Famer, and he's all defense and maybe a Defensive Player of the Year or two in the mix. And since then, like. I just it, like it sucks. I get people don't like him. I like watching him play basketball when he's right. And Same. and this is not like this is not all his fault, but he's got to correct what he can. Yeah, I I just wonder what would where would be a good spot for him? Because well, it seems yeah. like Brooklyn's kind of bailed on him at this point, too. Would it be like a Miami? Maybe. Ooh. No, because I think Pat Riley would kill him. Um, uh. I think. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. I think it's got to be somewhere like very low stakes, small market. Like if he was in like Utah, OKC, Portland. something like that. Sacramento, Portland, yeah, huh? like Sacramento. Like I mean, he's look. He could help. Like he's gonna have to fix some things, but he could help the defense a lot in a lot of places. But he has to play. That's the thing. He has to play and he has to be engaged. And we just didn't see that this season. It is wild watching him too. Even when he last played, and it's been a long time. Mid February was his last game. Mm-hmm. just still passing up shots. Oh, like, yeah. The, the mental yeah. side, like, I know we people want to clown him and all that, but the mental component of the game is, it's it's it's, it's, it's an important thing that we should talk well, about. Well, Zach, it is, but also I go, why would teams want to take a chance on him still? Like, and I say right. that, I say that because there's always a few of those players in this league where it's like, yeah, but there's this, and that's like taking a chance, and everyone's always like, talent trumps all. I mean, we can go to to Dallas right now, and you know, obviously mm-hmm. you're seeing the health being an issue with um, Kyrie and Luca, but it's like, does it trump all? Because you're seeing with Ben Simmons, he can't even play on the floor, and he's owed lots and lots of money. Yeah, I mean, it it can trump all. It should trump all, but it doesn't always, right? I, I think with him, I think the thing that would be great to to get into his mindset is 
I would like a coach to say, I don't care if you shoot 40% from the free throw line. Yeah. You are crazy big, athletic. No one can really stop you from going to the basket. You look like, look, you can't say go be Giannis, right? Because that's a whole other level and level and level of production and tenacity and everything. But if they told him, look, fourth quarter, go get the other team in foul trouble. Yeah, you might go four for 12 from the free throw line. Doesn't matter because now every time, I guess now like Spencer Dinwiddie gets a touch foul or Mikel Bridges gets a touch foul or whatever, they're going to the free throw line. Like he has the ability to get the other team in the penalty almost instantly if he wants to, but he's so in his head about shooting free throws. He just avoids the contact. He passes up shots. He moves the ball well, but it's, I mean, you are playing four on five out there. Yeah, I think the toughest thing with him now is the contract because I think obviously teams would try to take a chance on yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Mike, I would love to see someone like Mike Brown work with him. Wow. Just be in a good environment. The Kings have a lot of good vibes right now. Some Confidence goes such a long way. And mm -hmm. what does De'Aaron Fox talk about with Mike Brown? He He's gave him confidence. Yeah. And De'Aaron's playing the best basketball he's ever played. And I just, I'm not ready to be done with Ben Simmons. Now, if there's like legit nerve damage, he's dealing with his back, maybe it's a different conversation. But I'm, Zach, I'm with you. I, I think he could still contribute in the NBA. Yeah. And, and to both of your points, I, I mean, it's a lot easier to want to take a chance on him if he's making seven, eight million dollars a year right. rather than 30 plus for the next three or four years, right? Like that, that changes the conversation. I think if his contract was manageable, a lot of you know a dozen or two teams would want to take that chance but not at 30 you can't you can't waste that much cap space if he keeps doing what he's doing i i mentioned the mavs and i just want to go back to the west yeah, really yeah. quick um because i know for deuce and i we have not enjoyed watching that style of basketball yeah. in dallas how about you and how do you feel about luca's game this season um god i wish he'd stop complaining i really ah. do like he's it's so annoying i'm so like i get it refs have been bad and every i'm so sick of people complaining about officiating like it's just it's it's not going to change the way it is and so just go out there and play and control what you can control and it, like it reminds me so much i know this comparison has been made a lot of that just the james harden houston basketball yeah, he gets assists. He moves the ball. There's no real offense being created, though, if that makes sense. Like, there are there are different levels of assists, right? There are assists where you create a bucket for a teammate, or there are assists where you passed it, they shot it, and they made it, and so legally it's an assist. And and there's just not a lot of there's just not a lot of offense that is being created outside of him. It's very heliocentric and I just think there's a major limit on what that does. And then there's a major limit on the engagement that it causes for the rest of your teammates. And so for when they had someone like Dorian Finney Smith, that dude will go out there and defend no matter what, whether he's getting touches or not. He is one of the best role players in the league. You have to give him up to go get someone like Kyrie. And they took a big swing. And I get all of the reasons why they did it, but you lost a lot with that. Like you lost a lot of heart and a lot of competitiveness on that end of the floor they are atrocious defensively i mean it is it's tough to watch it's it? so bad like the idea that you would have Kyrie, luca and christian wood on the it floor is. together like oh my god i we could score on them like it's it's that <laughs> bad right i actually was i was coming home last night late at night and i i'm taking a right onto a street and i look over and there is an actual trash can on fire. I've never seen this before. It was like it was like a TV show. There's an actual trash can on fire on the corner, no one around. And my first thought was, oh, the Mavs. Like yeah. that's what I thought. Like it was just like that's how bad it is in Dallas right now. And they might like he might walk this summer. They might have done all that for three months of bad vibes. Like it's yep. crazy what's going on there. It is crazy what's gonna happen too. Like, is Luca get so upset that he's like, I want out? But Luca's gotta look in the mirror too. Let's be honest. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. He needs to look yeah. in the mirror and drop oh, a few LBs. Okay. Oh, are you fat I'm not shaming fat him? shaming. Fat no, shaming Luca no, right I'm now? fluffy. I don't even work out right now, so I'm not <laughs> fat shaming. I'm just saying, if you yeah, want, yeah, yeah. like, if he wants to take his game to the next level, let's be real. Like, he, if you look at video and photos of him mm -hmm. from early on in the season, I get people grow, but he's like in this like little little chubby stage right now. <laughs> Absolutely, he is, and like that's something. I mean, Reggie Miller fat shamed him last year on the air, and it worked. <laughs> It worked like he then dropped some pounds and they turned around their season and they were great. And you talk like talk about his game, like especially on defense, like Jason Kidd had to ask him last season, just play two more seconds of defense each possession. That's what we need. Two more seconds from your that, best like, player. That's, he played that's, a little bit. 
wild coaching, and yet it kind of worked. Like, just two more seconds. I have a question for you because you obviously have a podcast where you review poorly rated movies, and I, mm-hmm. I, lo- <laughs> I love hate watching movies. Love. Yeah. Uh, do you have one that is bad? You review it that is regarded as bad and is bad that you would recommend we have to watch. Oh, that's bad. That's rated poorly and is actually bad. Yeah, that you were just like, oh, this is awful. But like what good, if- almost good awful, right? Where you oh. you enjoyed hate watching it. Um, God, there are actually a lot of these. What's oh, you know what? This is uh, <laughs> this is gonna feel like terrorism. There is a movie <laughs> four years after Whoopi Goldberg won an Academy Award. Okay. okay. Called Theodore Rex. Oh yeah. <laughs> Theodore. Di- you know it. Yeah. A, a a dinosaur is a detective. Oh. Oh. Yep. And she's helping him on a case about a, the murder of another dinosaur and some great conspiracy. It is awful. I'm I mean, in. it's it's I'm hard in. to find too. It's oh, actually, it's on YouTube now. I think it's on the full movie's on YouTube now. It's hard. It's been hard to find. It is an atrocious movie. I don't. It's not good. I can't then say like, oh, you'll watch it and like it. You'll hate it. But it is so bewildering that she did this after winning an Academy Award, and the paycheck could not have been that high. Like, it's just <laughs> maybe she got a summer home out of it. I don't know. But Academy Award winner Whoopi Goldberg did that movie, and it is just bewildering. I remember seeing that cover at Blockbuster when I was little. <laughs> I don't remember it. I totally at all. do. I want to watch it. I do have one for you. It's yeah. a really deep cut. Maybe you won't even review it for the podcast. But if you're really bored, uh, turn on Last Ounce of Courage. Just go ahead and Google <laughs> I don't know that. Ounce. Oh. I don't Buckle know that. Zach. Okay. Just put it this way. I was on a bachelor party. And oh my god, the, the person who was getting married booked a theater <laughs> so, so we could watch this movie. I hate watch this movie. It was... <laughs> It's so bad. I'm already in. It's I don't so even great. care what it's about. I'm okay. already in. That's okay. that. Like, you sold it completely. Right. Just let me know what you think. Okay. <laughs> uh, dude, thanks so much for hopping on. And Thank I hope you we can do this again soon, man. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Anytime. Appreciate it. That's the one and only Zach Harper from The Athletic. He's so great. 